Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Yesterday, as you know, an American airstrike killed an Iranian general called Qasem Soleimani. For the past 21 years, Soleimani commanded the Quds Force, which is responsible for paramilitary operations outside the national borders of Iran. In that role, Soleimani was believed to be a patron of the Shia militias that regularly attacked American troops during the Iraq War. He was also a major player in Syria during their civil war, as well as in the campaign against ISIS. Though he was little known to the American public, Soleimani was among the most famous living figures in Iran and also among the most powerful, according to some accounts, second only to the supreme leader of that country. The Iranian government has already vowed to extract what it has called forceful revenge against the U.S. in response to his death. Now, whether that will happen and what form it might take remains to be seen. But it's no exaggeration to say that by the next time this show airs, we could be engaged in a conflict, a real conflict, with Iran. From Iran's perspective, we're already there. If Iranian forces killed the chairman of our Joint Chiefs of Staff, for example, would you consider it an act of war? You would. So what happened yesterday wasn't just another symbolic bombing sortie of the kind we've seen in Syria. It was a pivot point. Neocons in Washington understood that immediately. Congratulations to all involved in eliminating Qasem Soleimani, tweeted disgraced former National Security Advisor John Bolton. Hope this is the first step to regime change in Tehran, end quote. That, of course, has been the neocon objective all along. The president, though, has for years opposed that objective and in a statement said that regime change and war are not the point at all. We took action last night to stop a war. We did not take action to start a war. We do not seek regime change. However, the Iranian regime's aggression in the region, including the use of proxy fighters, to destabilize its neighbors must end, and it must end now. If Americans anywhere are threatened, we have all of those targets already fully identified, and I am ready and prepared to take whatever action is necessary. According to the Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, meanwhile, Soleimani was killed to forestall planned attacks on Americans. But as he later conceded, those attacks would have occurred in the Middle East not here in America. President Trump's decision to remove Qasem Soleimani from the battlefield saved American lives. There's no doubt about that. Uh, he was actively plotting in the region to take actions, a big action, as he described it, that would have put dozens, if not hundreds, of American lives at risk. And last night was the time that we needed to strike to make sure that this imminent attack that he was working actively uh, was disrupted. Was there any imminent threat to the U.S. homeland? These were threats that were located in the region. Threats in the region. If you don't live in Washington, here's the translation. That would be in hostile Middle Eastern countries, places where American troops would never be in the first place were it not for the insistent demands of non-geniuses like Max Boot and John Bolton. But never mind. No one in Washington is in mood for big picture questions right now, questions the obvious ones like, is Iran really the greatest threat we face? And who's actually benefiting from this? And why are we continuing to ignore the decline of our own country in favor of jumping into another quagmire from which there is no obvious exit? By the way, if we're still in Afghanistan 19 years sad years later, what makes us think there's a quick way out of Iran? And so on. Nobody is thinking like that right now. Instead, chest beaters like Senator Ben Sass of Nebraska are making the usual warlike noises, the ones they always make. This is very simple, Ben Sass wrote in a statement last night. General Soleimani is dead because he was an evil bastard who murdered Americans, which is essentially true. Soleimani was certainly a bad guy. But does that make killing him, quote, very simple? It does not. Nothing about life and certainly nothing about killing is ever very simple. And any politician who tells you otherwise is dumb or is lying. Yes, Soleimani was linked to the deaths of Americans. Nobody mourns his passing. But Mexico and China are also linked to the deaths of Americans. Each has flooded our country with narcotics, from which tens of thousands of Americans die every single year. Not that anyone in power cares. So does that mean we get to bomb Oaxaca? Can we start assassinating generals in the People's Liberation Army? Maybe. Maybe Ben Sass will call for that, too. He's a former consultant and a very tough character. But before we enter into a single new war, there's a criterion that ought to be met. Our leaders should explain to us how that conflict will make the United States richer and more secure. There are an awful lot of bad people in this world. We can't kill them all. It's not our job. 
Instead, our government exists to defend and promote the interests of American citizens, period. That's why we have a government. So has the killing of Soleimani done that? Maybe. No one in Washington has explained how. Instead, like Ben Sass, they're telling us what an awful person he was. He clearly was. So? That's irrelevant. Meanwhile, it's pretty clear that things could start to move in the wrong direction pretty quickly. We're praying they don't, but they could. How do we know that? Because we've seen it before. We fought quite a number of wars around the Middle East in recent decades. We attacked Saddam Hussein twice, as you know. In the end, we killed him. We invaded and occupied Afghanistan. We toppled Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. We fought ISIS in Syria and then, for some reason, stuck around. We're still there. We joined humanitarian missions in Lebanon and Somalia. Our special forces have been quietly fighting in Yemen, Pakistan, Niger, who knows where else, many other places. In every single place, each of these conflicts has turned out to be longer and bloodier and more expensive than we were promised in the first place. The benefits, often they've been non-existent. A lot of lectures about how the people we're killing deserve to die. Certainly they did. Hope that makes you feel better. What do the American people think about all of this? Not that anyone cares. Was well, too soon, strictly speaking, to know the killing of Soleimani happened just last night. But just five months ago, after months of supposed Iranian provocation, Americans didn't seem to view Iran as a major concern, not even close. In a Gallup poll taken last August, just 18 percent of Americans said that they backed military force to shut down Iran's nuclear program. 78 percent said they preferred diplomacy and economic sanctions alone. So in a democracy, you'd think this would matter. But as is so often the case, the preferences of actual Americans don't enter the equation at all. They're immaterial. In 2016, Donald Trump ran on a promise of fewer foreign adventures, considering the ones we'd embarked upon didn't work for very well. He vowed instead to focus on our problems here at home, which are growing. Against the odds, he won that election, probably because of that promise. But ever since, Washington, including some around the president, have been committed to ignoring the results of that election and its implications. Washington has wanted war with Iran for decades. They've been working toward it. They may have finally gotten it. 